I forgot to go over the vintage flange effect when covering the other flanges, so I'm going to make a sound while going over some of the parameters for that. So I just have an initialized AL1. I'm going to choose some noise here. And let's route to the insert effect. And we will choose 190 something. Uh, let's see. Vintage flanger 192. And let me zero out some of these parameters. And I'll put this on 5050. And this is fine. Okay, so also let's route to the individual outputs so we can see what's going on here. So this effect is pretty interesting. It really does have a kind of vintage effect. Let's check what the wet sound sounds like. So what this should be right now is simply the signal delayed by an amount. Also, I do like the way the manual control works on this. This is delay time right here. Um, the lower values are have the, the flange sounding lower. I'm not sure how to explain it like that. Let's go to 50-50 so we can actually see the, um, the delayed signal summed with the original signal so we can see the comb filtering. Now let's turn this on. <laughs> there we are. So notice as I go higher on the manual control, our flange is getting higher. I believe that's the opposite way that the flange works in the other units. I'm pretty sure uh, higher numbers give lower values, give lower delay values. Um, I could be wrong on that. I haven't gone back to check, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. So let's check to see what it's like to modulate the delay time. And we'll do that with this LFO, which is traveling very slowly. Actually, let's speed that up a little bit. Um, now I want to know if it acts in a unipolar way like the other flanges were. So let's like use this as a reference point. We're at, well, let's use this one next to 500. It is a bipolar modulation. Very interesting. So the other flanges, they only modulate uh, in a way that increases the delay time. This works in both directions. Um, something else that's noteworthy about this is that it has a bunch of um, alternate modulation sources that you can use to modulate uh, almost every parameter other than like LFO reset, which wouldn't really make sense to modulate. Um, with this, the LFO reset, we could just use uh, gate would be the obvious one, gate one. Um, and uh, let's start checking some things out. Let's let's add some AMS sources. So uh, like the other flange unit, this one does kind of have some gain compensation from resonance. Um, also, on a side note, I'm not sure with electrical engineering if if it's not gain compensation, but what it is is that the Moog, because I'm used to when you turn up uh, resonance on a Moog, it gets really boomy. And I think maybe that's because they are doing the kind of gain compensation on, in their units. Um, whereas with electricity, naturally, when you give it some feedback and resonance, I think it might um, uh, turn, it might, uh, how do I explain this? Uh, it offsets the, the overall gain just from the resonance. But I'm not 100% sure on any of that. Some some smarter electrical engineer or designer would be able to answer that. Anyway, when we do turn up resonance, uh, we will lose our our perfect uh, cancellations. So if I give it like 36 resonance, I would need to, of course, boost the wet signal in order to get our... Uh, actually, let's give it some more. Sure, 40 is fine. Let's boost the wet signal to get our cancellations back. 
So yeah, somewhere around there. At like 68-ish, 67. So I want to assign a parameter to this. I'll use VJS plus Y. And I'll also do the same here, VJS plus Y. And I'll turn this one up by 17. I'll turn this down by 17, so we're back at 5050. And I'll turn this one up by 40. So that way, I could just move VJS plus Y to give more resonance, as they call it, or more feedback. While maintaining my cancellation. So now let's um, let's add VJS X to um, the LFO, and actually, uh, let's turn that off for now. Let's 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 do VJS to VJS plus X to the manual control, and let's pop over to the vector control and change some parameters. Um, I do not want to enable volume control. Um, I want VJS X to simply be in the positive direction, so I can use this whole field. Uh, it'll make it easier to program. Um, I don't need key sync on. That's just for the volume envelope anyway. Um, I do want the vector envelope on, and I will not loop. So I'll turn that off. Um, and I only want to focus on this x-axis. We have this patched into the manual controller, the delay time right now. So um, I don't care about the y-axis. I'll just go ahead and zero that out for each parameter. And now I'll have 0 and 1 be on opposite ends of the spectrum. And I'll just have uh, the rest of the parameters just be down by, by where the 0 node is at. So right now, uh, we go from 0 to 1, back down, and then that's that's it. Um, I'm going to put this in time mode, and I don't want any hold time for any of the parameters. And um, I don't want any transition time from 0 to 1. And then from 1 to 0, I'll have it be, let's see. You know how I like 170. So let's have it last like two bars at 170. Um, that would be, let's see, this would be a half note. Uh, this would be a whole note. And then that would be 2.8 seconds. So let's dial that in. Cool. OK, so now we go from 0 to 1 instantaneously, and then from 1 back down to 0. And if we want to hear what that sounds like before um, I really patch it in, let's go back to the effect and bypass it, and let's just check it with pitch so you can really hear what it sounds like. So let me go to the EXI, take that off, let's listen to a saw, go to pitch, go to VJS uh, plus X, and let's turn that up an octave. So it goes from 0 to 1 instantly and then falls back down to its original uh, pitch, and that is just a one-shot. Cool. Now we'll just take that off. Let's zero out this parameter. Okay. So let me give it some noise again so we can see the flange. Okay, so we have VJS patched into manual. Let's um, let's just give it the full the full amount. So let's hear what this sounds like. Now, now this is very interesting about this unit. Even when you patch alternate modulation sources into it, it creates a slew effect, not unlike the um, AMS mixers. So if you pop over to an AMS mixer and choose the smoothing algorithm, you can smooth out any uh, increases in values or decreases in values, increments or decrements. Um, and this unit does that automatically. 
So I, even though we are supposed to be traveling from zero to one instantly and then decaying slowly back down, uh, you'll notice that uh, going from zero to one will sound and then it will slowly travel back. The delay time will slowly increase. It'll, the flange will slowly travel back down. Um, so let's hear what that sounds like. So hear how we still heard the attack. Which is very interesting. Let's give it some resonance so we can maybe see it and hear it better. So we've created an envelope flange like the other effect just by using the VJS instead. Uh, let's give it some uh, LFO depth. Let's uh, let's speed it up. And to make it more interesting, we can actually keep it at a slower value, but then patch VJS plus X into it. Let's hear what that sounds like. Very good. Uh, and we could even take off uh, some of the modulation. So we'll only have uh, some modulation up at the top. Or some, some more LFO modulation at the top and then less so as it gets down to the bottom. Cool, so that's what that sounds like with noise. And we were using now all the AMS sources were resetting. I didn't bother to set the, the LFO offset. Um, even when you do, it, it still gives kind of a weird uh, choppy effect. Um, but let's uh, make more of a sound. Let's send something regular through it instead of just sending noise. We use both oscillators. And to hear flange better, I do like to use a more thick sound. So we're using detune saws, which is a saw up, saw down. Uh, let's go ahead and detune them. Let's give it some sub oscillator and some ring mod. Ring mod sounds really cool in this since I is because I am using uh, waveforms that will cancel pretty easily when summed with the original. And I'm going to give this more of an analog feel by having the phases on random. And speaking of randomness, I can also add some of that here that randomizes the notes, the MIDI notes. Um, it's almost like a retuning per note. Sounds nice. And let's let's see what else can we do with this. Let's add some portamento. I don't want it to be fingered. Let's go up to sixty. And let's um, give it some drive. How about that? I always like the way that sounds on this. Okay, let's uh, play some chords and um, see how this sounds. Sounds 
that's pretty good. Um, I also like to give it just a bit of a uh, bit of a release. Let's give it a little bit more. Maybe flatten out the curve a bit. Yeah, so lots of movement in there. Sounds pretty good. So that's it. Thanks for watching.